Hey folks, Alan Mandic, the Hot Rod Hippie here. This week's video, I've got basic fabrication shop tips for you. Things to help your shop work more smoothly, get better finished products, and just work smarter. So let's check it out. Now the tips I have for you are pretty darn basic. I said that at the top and I meant it. These are simple things that I use on a daily basis, but I feel like there are probably plenty of simple things that I implement in my workflow and in the shops that I work in that you may not even think about because you're not doing it on a daily basis like I am. Or if you are doing it on a daily basis, maybe I have some different ideas that you might find useful or you might have some I might find useful. Let me know in the comments down below if something comes to mind for you. Now the first couple of tips I have for you focus around the drill press. Now even if you don't own a drill press, I recommend you still watch, still stick around for this because these can apply to hand drill stuff and also they just become useful tips if you ever think about getting a drill press or you work around one. Having a drill press is a vital tool in my opinion. You can pick up a pretty decent one for a few hundred dollars at the most or find a good quality one used in your area and they are very, very useful tools for good quality fabrication work. Now we've probably all seen drill presses with Swiss cheese tables on them where they're drilled into every square inch of a darn table. That drives me nuts. Because that means if you're trying to clamp a part into one spot, maybe one of those holes is making that part tilt a little bit. So you drill in an angle. If you're drilling through some thicker material or a, maybe a, a casting or a boss, something you don't have a mill to use with, then that can really screw you up. So personally, the first thing that I do, whether I'm working with an already Swiss cheese drill press or a brand new one, is I cut a piece of plywood, actual plywood, not chipboard, not MDF, and I go ahead and cut it to the size of a table and I put it on there to have as a drill surface. Now I use this because this allows me to protect the drill bed. This is just respectful if you're working with somebody else's piece of equipment. Or it's good for resale value if it's yours and you think you might sell it down the line to get a better one or just get rid of it. This can really help out in that respect. Also, it's just useful because as you're drilling into a piece, if you drill through the piece of material, you see wood chips coming up, you know you're done drilling your hole. Now over time, this plywood will become saturated with cutting oil. It will get a bunch of holes in the same spot, right in the center most likely, and it become kind of useless in the end. So you just throw it away and you put another one on there rather than having to buy a whole new table for a drill press. If you're worried about accuracy and you're gonna be drilling things that you know you need it to be really straight, well, you should probably use a mill. But if that's a concern for you, you can always put a piece of aluminum plate metal on there. My actual personal drill press, I don't have a piece of wood on it. I have a piece of quarter inch aluminum 6061 plate on the table to go ahead and protect that one. It does the same job and it's a little more accurate for clamping things down. There's not any of the squishy give that wood will get over time. Like I said, the next one is also based around drill press, but I promise you this is a simple one that you will find use for. I stick a five gallon bucket underneath of my drill press on the pedestal. Why? For hole saw knockouts. I go ahead and knock out any of the hole saw centers that I cut out material with, or rotor brooch cuttings and annular cuttings, any of those discs that are left over once I cut a hole in something, I throw them in this bucket. Anytime I need to fill a hole, such as on a frame rail, if maybe I want to shave some holes off of the frame, if I want to go ahead and fill a hole up because it got hogged out and I want to fill it and then re-drill after I weld it and finish it off, I dig through that bucket and I can almost certainly find a piece of material that's going to work for my needs. It's amazing how versatile a circle can be. These things are so useful. I've taken the aluminum ones before and made really nice finished off washers for projects out of them. Just drill out the center of them and have a, a perfect aluminum washer for that component. They are just really versatile and useful things to keep around. The last piece of advice I have for you based around the drill press is clamp your material down to your drill press. Now, this is such a basic concept, but I see so, so many people ignore it. I cannot stand, it is a huge pet peeve when people try to hold a piece of material and drill into it. That is a quick way to hurt yourself, it's a quick way to hurt the piece of equipment, and it's a quick way to break drill bits, tooling, whatever you're trying to work with. Don't do it. The few seconds you save are not worth the danger you're putting yourself in or tooling in. If nothing else, think about that. When you try to drill like that and the piece grabs and it starts shaking and you're trying to hold onto it and it spins around, that's when you're going to bend a drill bit, that's when you're going to shear a drill bit off, that's when your hole saw is going to bend or break. Stop doing it. Now personally, I don't worry about using the slots and having fancy holding equipment or vices or anything like that. I just use vice grips and I clamp everything down to the table as needed. The bigger the piece is, the bigger the hole I'm drilling, the more clamps I'll use, but I generally have at least two clamps on every piece of material that I'm drilling, whether it be a piece of sheet metal up to plate metal. Now all of these apply to hand drilling as well. If you're working on a workbench, you don't have a drill press, clamp your material down. Clamp a piece of wood underneath the material you're drilling on. So you go ahead and drill into that. You want to save your workbench. You know, even if it's just a plywood topped workbench, you don't want to have to replace that plywood top every couple months or years just because you were drilling into it when you could have used a sacrificial piece of wood to drill into. 
The next thing I'm gonna talk about is a pretty broad statement, but I have a specific application I can show you what I'm talking about here, and that is organization. The more organized you are, the more you know where things are supposed to be or have a home, the easier your workflow is gonna go and the quicker it will go and the better quality work you will do. But a more specific thing that I can show you is this vice grip organizer that I made. I use this because I hate putting vice grips in toolboxes. It's such a waste of space for my needs. Vice grips take a ton of space up in toolboxes. Personally, I have three full-size professional grade toolboxes and they are all full and I really could stand to upgrade every single one of them but I can't justify doing that right now. This wall organizer is so useful for clearing everything up. If I had to dig through a drawer every time I wanted a specific vice grip just to dig out one and then have to put it back underneath the other ones it would be such a pain and such a waste of time. This board allows me to organize everything really nicely. I can see at a glance if something is missing. I quickly know, I generally know how many are hanging on each one so I can say, hey, there's not enough on that one there. Where the heck are my little C-clamps? And I can look for them. And there's actually a couple of blank spots on there as well that I left for expansion because I know there's a couple of clamps I don't personally own right now that I need to get. I've been putting off for way too long and I'm gonna put those in those positions. Organization is key in so many ways. I have customers come to me on a regular basis who bring me a project they've been working on for years. They're, they want me to finish it up. They bring it to me and with a pile of parts. First thing I do is inventory the parts so I know what we have to work with. Every time somebody does that, I go through the parts and I come up with at least one thing that's doubled. Uh, I've got three sets of door handles because they were a really good deal to show and I forgot that I had them. If you were organized, you might remember that stuff better. I'll also label on the outside of cardboard boxes when I put parts into them what is inside that box so I don't even have to open it to know what's inside that box already. A general useful tip is ratchet straps. I keep a handful of ratchet straps around the shop at all times and they are so useful. They are versatile pieces of equipment that you can pick up pretty cheap. The cheap ones are fine for little projects around the shop. You're not worrying about tying down an expensive motorcycle or car or anything like that. If you're just doing what I'm using them for, the cheapest ones you can get are generally perfectly fine. I use them all the time. In this instance here, I'm using it to hold a door in place. I've got a rod jammed against the door and the ratchet strap is holding the door in against that rod. This allows me to work on the door without having to have it fully open or fully closed. I was doing door jam work on this car, so this really made it much easier for me to work on this thing and not have to worry about the door moving around when I'm hammering on it or grinding or any of that. It stays where I want it. I'll also use them to pull things on a regular basis. If maybe B pillars are spread out on a door, I can use it to pull that B pillar in toward the center of the car to bring it in where I need it to be. They are such versatile tools. I've used them to hang transmissions in the past where I pulled a trans cross member out from under something and I ran a ratchet strap from frame rail to frame rail and just held that thing up underneath there for storage purposes to have it there for a little while, that can work. I've done all kinds of things with ratchet straps and they are very versatile tools to keep around. In even the budget sense, they can be very, very useful tools. The last thing we're gonna talk about is the least glamorous thing, and this is one that most people are probably just gonna tune out for, it's safety. I know, I know, safety third. Don't do that. Think about this stuff. It is important. Take it from me, a professional doing this on a daily basis, it matters. I've had to have my eyes scraped numerous times to get metal that's embedded in it out of my eyes. That is a waste of your time and money to do that. Believe me, I live in America, I don't have health insurance, it costs me a couple hundred dollars every single time I have to have that done. I have constant ringing in my ears, it's called tinnitus, from not taking this seriously enough earlier on in my career, in my life, around cars, fabrication, construction, all these things. It took a toll and I, for the rest of my life, will have to listen to a ringing in my ears whenever things are quiet. I wear the Isotunes Extra Hearing Protection now. These, I reviewed them a while back. You can check out the video at the link up here. And I use them on a daily basis now to help me protect my hearing and still be able to listen to audiobooks and music when I want. I wear a respirator anytime I'm grinding or doing heavier welding work that's gonna throw off a lot of fumes because those things will affect you. Breathing that in all day long is no good for you. When I started to wear a respirator every day, I noticed at the end of the day, I wasn't blowing black crap out of my nose at the end of the day. I didn't have to wash my face as much and it just felt better to work that way. A few seconds longer putting on a respirator at the beginning of a grinding project will save you a lot of health maladies down the road. Even down to my hands, these black nitrile gloves, I wear them all day, every day. They're thin enough that I can still get a good feel over a panel for dents and bumps and imperfections, 
but they protect my hands from the chemicals and the dust and the dirt. I don't have to wash my hands nearly as much when I'm wearing these all day, which really saves me a lot of time going back and forth, tearing up my hands with soaps. I don't have to worry about that stuff. And it also protects the projects from me, actually. I'm one of those people that I produce like skin oils that actually rust metal. So if I was constantly working on a project barehanded, I have in the past, and it ends up with handprints and fingerprints all over it. It's not a good time. I wear these things regularly, so I don't have to deal with that down the road. I don't even want to make this video so long. I do have more things I need to think about and show you over time. We'll get to them eventually in other videos or as we work on project stuff. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please go ahead and drop it a like. Let me know in the comments down below. Are these things that you find useful or do you have ideas for me? Let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe to keep up to date with all the content every week. Thanks for coming around, folks.